Welcome back boxing fans. So let's talk about some international boxing today. Obviously a lot of Americans may not be interested, so this is your chance to obviously transfer to something a little more interesting as far as you're concerned. But if you're a boxing fan, then we're talking boxing. So let's break it down. Let's look at a fight card that happened from the UK early, early, early this morning. Uh, I didn't stay up to watch all the Liverpool games, so I definitely was not up to watch this live, but I definitely uh, checked it out later in Memorex. Does anyone remember that Memorex commercial? Uh, if you do, you're aging yourself out. But if you haven't seen it, you can always go to Batman Boxing on Telegram. And he always posts all the fights, you know, not that long after the fight happens. So if you don't see it live, check him out. You can always throw him a donation, help a brother out. He does great work uh, for boxing fans around the world. Obviously, a lot of us don't have access to some of these fights. You know, like obviously this one from the UK was on uh, BT Sports, I, I guess it was, or what BT Sports is now called, TNT. <laughs> I only know that because uh, I was eating curry last night with my friends that are from England. So uh, watching Man City win and obviously that came up that BT Sports has changed its name. There you go. If you're from the UK, then obviously you already know that. If you're from the US, then you probably don't give a shit. <laughs> but obviously Sky Sports, uh, BT Sports, you know, these are... Sports channels I can't get in Taiwan unless I use an illegal streaming type of thing, one of those illegal app things you can get, like my friend has, because he's obviously from England, so he wants to watch Derby play, so he gets that. But the problem with that is sometimes the stream is so temperamental, you pay money for it, and, and it just doesn't give you the quality you want. And that's the problem which with watching boxing you know, from abroad. And even for Americans, obviously, if you want to watch these UK fights, you're going to have the same problems. And for UK guys to watch American fights, you may have some of these problems as well. And anybody, obviously, from around the world, you know what I'm talking about. So it is what it is. I know people say get a VPN. And I had a VPN. And it was great until it was no longer great. Uh, and then it became a pain in my ass that I'm paying money for a VPN and I'm paying money for uh, subscriptions to these these channels or these apps like YouTube TV. But then when it no longer works or I'm having issues hooking up, then I just want to shoot myself in the fucking head, right? It becomes uh, frustrating. And that's the problem with the world we live in. <laughs> Maybe we take it for granted. I, I use this analogy a lot, but when I was a kid, you only watched boxing when it was on free TV coming from the States. So whether it was NBC, ABC, or CBS. Then later on, ESPN came out. So now then we had even more potential for boxing. And now, compared to then, oh my God. It's not even comparable. But because life is easy, we take it for granted. We just assume that this shit should be here when I want to watch it. And sometimes it's not. So times like that... You can check out Batman Boxing on Telegram. Throw them a super chat. Throw them a, you know, a, a thank you cash donation. And uh, I'm sure he will keep doing the great work that he's doing for you and me as boxing fans. But let's get to this. Uh, a lot of these fighters I'm not as familiar with as obviously my UK brethren who obviously see a lot more of it on the news in the newspaper obviously a lot more talking within the UK regarding these fighters for obvious reasons they're from the UK uh, for the rest of us you know we know the fighters who've been bigger people who fought uh, globally people that are not domestic level but obviously have proven that they're beyond domestic level and that's some of what we got in this fight card today so let's break that down and talk about the possibilities for this moving forward. Uh, one of the first workup fights for this, and by far the biggest name on the card, but yet he was in with a mediocre opponent. A get back in the ring to knock off the rust type of opponent. 
and to get prepared for bigger and better things moving forward. And that is Anthony Yard or Anthony Yardy. I don't know how different people pronounce his name. Some people use the E, some people don't. But we know that he was obviously just in a world title, a uh, huge three bell unification fight with Arthur Berbiev not that long ago a and fought brilliantly, really performed at a really high level. Obviously getting beat by Berbiev is not really a criticism. Berbiev is a monster, potentially the best fighter at 175 pounds and easily a pound for pound top 10 fighter. So to lose to him, you know, it, it's really at this point of his career more of a, a learning sort of lesson, right? You lost to Kovalev, it showed you that you needed to have better endurance, you had to be able to go 12 rounds and keep your endurance up. This round, that wasn't the problem. This one, you know, what you did, a lot of it was very successful. So much so that people were questioning better Biev's longevity at this point of his career thinking that he was kind of exposed by Anthony Yard, even though he did score the stoppage uh, and continue to retain his titles. But, you know, he wasn't as dominant as he had been in the fight prior to that when he fought Joe Smith, who he obliterated, destroyed, dominated, right? That's why I would have loved to see Anthony Yard bounce back with a Joe Smith fight, something like that, right? Just to show you there are levels to this. And obviously, styles do make fights. But... Let's check out what Anthony Yard has been up to. Uh, he was fighting Marco Nikolic. Marco Nikolic, this is him there. Uh, obviously, I can put his face on my screen and you can see it for yourself. 32 and 4, 12 knockouts, been stopped three times. So, well, he's a very experienced fighter. Obviously, he's a guy who is used to getting knocked out. 34 years of age. Uh, and when you scroll through his resume, you know, he lost to... European level competition and once you see that he's lost to European level competition you know inevitably he's going to be destroyed by Anthony Yard and that's exactly what happened Anthony Yard destroyed him in three rounds uh, doing exactly what we expect him to do Anthony Yard obviously right now 25 and 3 uh, 24 knockouts stopped twice which you know People could hold against him, but you got to think about the two fighters he got beat by. Two guys with great KO percentages and great resumes topped with KO after KO after KO after KO after KO. I mean, Kovalev and then better BF. So we can't read too much into that. He has another loss, which he obviously redeemed against a fellow UK fighter, Lyndon Arthur. He lost a split decision, came back and stopped Lyndon Arthur in four rounds in the rematch. So... You know, definitely showed that he was better than that. Since losing to better BF, he jumped back and he fought a guy, Jorge Silva, stopped him in two rounds. And now, of course, Nikolic, who he stopped in three rounds. And what's being reported, and, you know, we can only cross our fingers and hope that this is what happens, but that there's going to be a matchroom versus, uh, I never can remember what's his face is a uh, promotional company. But whoever they are, uh, BT Sports generally, right, is where they're represented. Uh, so what's being discussed is a potential fight between Anthony Yard and Callum Smith, which is a huge fight. That, my friends, is dynamic, sensational, an incredible light heavyweight matchup between two uh, domestic opponents right so in the uk i think that fight's going to get a ton of attention obviously that's going to be shown in saudi arabia but obviously televised in the uk and i think obviously you're really getting a lot of people to pay attention to a matchup like that i would have preferred myself uh yard fighting buatsi who's coming off of a win that's a fight that's long been talked about and been sort of a in interior rivalry within the UK boxing community. So that's a fight I would have preferred, but it is what it is. What it is. Callum Smith uh, is not a bad fight. Obviously, Callum Smith is coming off of a loss to better BF when he got stopped. Well, Yard is also coming off of a loss to better BF where he got stopped. So at this point, it's a pretty, pretty, pretty intriguing fight. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about this matchup? Who do you have? 
Do you have the London fighter or the Liverpoolian, Liverpudlian uh, in Callum Smith? I am a Liverpool football fan, but to be honest, uh, I favor Anthony Yard in that matchup. And then another fight that was on this card. Let's go back and check it out. Uh, this is a fighter I'm not that familiar with, but I always think it's kind of funny because his name is kind of like Abdullah Mason, but switched around, right? His name is Masood Abdullah, or uh, maybe I pronounce it right. 10 and 0 with seven KOs. Obviously, I think a Pakistan, Pakistani and UK resident, uh, 30 years old, so obviously not young and without that much experience or, or that much experience at the pro level. He today, of course, went out there and stopped Quasi Asaf in five rounds, a guy who was 12 and 2, which was a good victory for him, I suppose. Uh, but still, at this point, he's a prospect whose level of competition has been pretty mediocre. He's 30 years of age, right? You know, he shows some good pop, seven KOs and 10 fights. But, you know, the question is, how good is he? Is he just a domestic level UK fighter? At this point, that's kind of what he looks like. Going to have to see how he looks moving forward, what level of competition he's going to be put in, and how he performs against those guys. Uh, he does not look to be on Abdullah Mason's uh, level. <laughs> not at all. Even though his name does make me laugh that it's kind of similar. Another fighter on this card, a guy who's looking good, is Sam Noakes. 13 and 0, 13 KOs. So obviously he's got a little bit of pop. He's 26 years of age, so not that old. Uh, so, you know, things are lining up to be very positive. He's coming off of a win today against an undefeated fighter in Louis Sylvester, who was 13 and 0, stopped him in four rounds. That's pretty impressive. When you look at the guys he's been facing, obviously they're not killers, but you can see gradually he's fighting better and better competition. This is the third fighter in four fights he's faced who's been undefeated. So they're not putting him in with bums and the kind of guys he should be able to walk through and walk over. Right? He fought Calvin McCord, who was 12-0, and 0, stopped him in four rounds. Fought uh, Kumar, who was 10-0, and 0, stopped him in two rounds. And now obviously fought Louis Sylvester, who was 13-0, and 0, stopped him in four rounds. So that's pretty impressive, right? Pretty impressive. Obviously, it'll be intriguing to see uh, who he fights next and how they match him up uh, and what level of uh, opponent he's going to be in with and how big of a jump are they going to put him in with. I think at this point, he's been fighting some young, hungry, undefeated fighters who don't know how to lose, and he's performed very well. Now, maybe they need to throw him in with a more experienced veteran fighter who maybe is a little past his prime, but obviously has a lot of experience, maybe a former world champion, a guy that, you know, uh, has a huge experience level behind him and, and uh, knows how to survive, has been in with elite level competition. And then you can put him in with a guy like that. Obviously not at a point where you would expect him to get beat, but where you know he's going to have to show all his tools and, and definitely... Um, perform above what he's been doing recently. Similar to Keyshawn Davis, who was put in with, obviously, Jose Petraza. Petraza, who was a two-weight world champion, obviously has taken quite a few losses since he's moved to 140 pounds, but against elite-level competition. You throw him in there with Keyshawn Davis. Obviously, people have high expectations for Keyshawn Davis, and Keyshawn Davis delivered right against the biggest-name opponent he's been in with. And you'd have to say, probably the best, right? Even though some people think that maybe Pedraza uh, lost something coming down in weight. And maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. Uh, maybe they're just overlooking Keyshawn Davis's pedigree and ability. But we'll see moving forward. But yes, Sam Noakes, one to keep an eye on in the UK. Obviously, you know, uh, a new version of uh, Ricky Hatton, right? You know? Scrappy, hard puncher. Uh, so, you know, we will see what happens with him. And then probably the guy on the card outside of Anthony Yard who has the biggest buzz around him is Hamza Shiraz, who is fighting Liam Williams. Like I said, right, kind of the same sort of 
suggestion I have for Sam Noakes in his next fight or maybe the fight after that. A veteran guy who's been in world title fights. I don't think he's ever won a world title, Liam Williams, but he's been in with world champions and has done well, right? When you think about Liam Williams and who he's been in with, his resume is impressive. It's kind of a... Oh, why can't I think of his name? Heavyweight, UK guy. Currently, he was 25 and 5 and 1, only stopped twice, uh, 20 knockouts and 25 wins. I mean, so he's got some power. He's dangerous. 31 years old. So even at this age, he's not that old. 31 is far from uh, washed up, but obviously he has been in with tough competition. We look through his resume and, you know, he's fought guys like uh, Liam Smith, obviously fought him twice back to back lost both of those fights, uh, faced Mark Heffron, who at the time was undefeated and was really getting a lot of buzz, uh, faced Atlantis Fox, who was 26-1-1, one one, surprised everybody by beating him impressively, stopping him in that fight, a fighter that most people felt Fox was going to beat him, right? Uh, faced Andrew Robertson, stopped him in one round, and then obviously faced Demetrius uh, Andrade, went the distance with him, Faced Chris Eubanks Jr., went the distance with him. Obviously, just faced Hamza Shiraz and got stopped in one round. One round. Like, he just fought Chris Eubank and Demetrius Andrade in 2020, 2021 and 2022. Right? Elite fighters. You know, some people had... Demetrius Andrade is the best fighter at 160 pounds, right? Some people. And Shiraz went in there and fucking destroyed him. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think anybody could have expected that in truth, right? Liam Williams is a good fighter and not the kind of guy you expect to be steamrolled in that fashion. Get out of here. Shiraz, 19-0, 15 KOs. Kid looks good, 24 years of age, tall, six foot three. Obviously, you know, a bit of a Tommy Hearns build, right, for these weight divisions. Uh, you know, that's a sensational victory for him. Definitely a, a, a statement. And he's been in with some good fighters most recently. His last performance was against a tough Russian fighter, uh, Dimitro Mitrofanov, who was 13 0 with one draw. Prior to that, River Wilson Bent, who was 13, 1 and 1, right? So they've been gradually bringing him along, you know, against better and better competition. Fought Bradley Skeet, and obviously, UK people are very familiar with Bradley Skeet. Uh, at the time, he was 29 and 3. Faced tough European fighter, uh, Guido Nicolas Pito, uh, who was 27, 26, 7 and 2 when he faced him. So you know, he's, he's been doing well and obviously moving gradually. And today was obviously the biggest test of his career. And you would have to say he passed with flying colors. And we've seen that recently. Obviously, Jaime Monguia passed with flying colors, stopping John Ryder, sending him in retirement, into retirement. Uh, obviously, we had Abdullah Mason, who had a sensational uh, one-punch stoppage in his performance this weekend. Uh, obviously against a low-level opponent, but nonetheless, you have to appreciate the way he went about getting rid of that guy. And that guy was undefeated as well. Uh, and of course, Keyshawn Davis, who destroyed Petraza, destroyed him, made the fight look not even fucking competitive, which really is a bit of a surprise. And, and then obviously this guy who just faced Liam Williams, who's a legitimate fighter, legitimate, and, and steamrolled him in one fucking round. So overall, I think for UK fans, this was a solid fight. You got to see Anthony Yard, who's obviously going to be in a really big fight later this year. You had two other up-and-coming young uh, UK fighters uh, against good competition. But obviously, both of them need to step up their level of competition to really show us, us boxing fans, really how good they are and what kind of potential they really do have. And then, of course... Uh, Cherie's made a statement today with a fantastic victory, a one-round stoppage of 
perennial contender in Liam Williams. So, you know, there's not much more you can do as a guy in his position. And now he's right there in the conversation for uh, potential world title fights. Let me just look right now to see where he is on the rankings. I'm just curious what sanctioning bodies have him ranked and where. So let's check it out. Hamza Shiraz. People are so funny for Chinese New Year. And the middleweight division, they, they need some, they need some, they need something. So adding him to that group is definitely a good thing. Maybe we can potentially see him in with, uh, what's his face? Alan McCune. My phone is dying. Just let me get my fancy, shiny battery. Sparkly, sparkly. Bling, bling, bling. Money ain't a thing. Yes, I don't have a... A cord downstairs, it's upstairs, so I'll just stick this in and we're good to go. There we go. Okay, so right now, look at those rankings. It's kind of funny, right, when you see box rex rankings. Not that you should be confused with box rec rankings and necessarily take them as the gospel, but right now, this is what box rec has, as you can see in the comment section below. Eubank is number one, they have him as the king. The King. Liam Smith, number two. Just got knocked out by Eubank. Uh, Charlo, number three. Last fight was 168. Hasn't fought in two years. Shiraz, or sh however you'd pronounce his name. Sorry. Uh, number four. Nurslanov, uh, Kazakhstanian fighter. Number five. Janibek, number six. So Unified Champion is ranked number six. But guys who've never been world champions are ranked above him. Like, that's why you gotta ask yourself, what the fuck is BoxRex algorithm? And how do they continue to push this when it's so obviously ridiculous? <laughs> Carlos Adama, seven. Amo Williams, eight. Elijah Garcia, he's an up and comer. At number nine, some kid from Ireland who I've never heard of. Oh, I wonder if that's that black guy. That's pretty aggressive, maybe. Uh, Etonosa Oliaha, maybe. He is number 10, and that's the top 10. The middleweight division, man, is pretty, pretty, pretty weak. So having this kid there is definitely a solid. But I wasn't supposed to be on box rec. I was trying to look at boxing scene and their rankings. So let's go there. Boxing scene. Dun, 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 dun. So currently he's ranked number four by the WBC. He is, of course, very low by the WBA, number 11. And of course, Michael Zarafa is number one. The WBA, man, the worst fucking rankings in boxing. Uh, the IBF have him unranked and of course the first two positions on the rankings are empty and then they have two Eastern Europeans who I've never heard of Dennis Radovan and Andre Mikalenkovic right you have two guys who never fucking nobody's ever heard of and I bet if I look at their their resume neither one of those guys has faced a top 10 or top 15 ranked IBF middleweight. So how do you become number two or number three and four in the rankings when you've literally not fought fucking anyone? And then people wonder why people get pissed off when guys are forced to fight mandatories that they've never heard of and they know won't sell and nobody wants to watch. So the problem is we push mandatories and then you wonder why no one is interested because no one's fucking seen the guys fight. No one has faith in them. Nobody knows who they are, right? This is the, the problem with these rankings. They're fucking ridiculous, man. 
And then here is the WBO where he is ranked number five. So there you go. So highly ranked by the WBC, whose rankings are always pretty good, and the WBO. Uh, the WBA and the IBF obviously show how terrible they are by uh, their rankings. But let me know in the comment section below, who would you like to see him fight next? Obviously, uh, a potential fight between him and Liam Smith, right? Or him and potentially Chris Eubank, as far as a domestic UK fight. Those fights are huge. And let's just think. Potentially, that could be the other another fight on, on the card mix-up, right? You know, you're going to have Anthony Yard fight Smith. So maybe you could have Smith's brother versus Shiraz as one of the other co-main events on that card from Saudi Arabia. That shit would be dynamite. Right there, those two fights themselves are really, really intriguing. And then we think about what other potential fights we can get made uh, between those two promotional companies, Matchroom and uh, obviously the other one. Uh, maybe you can leave in the comment section below which other three matchups would you like to see on that Saudi Arabian card between those two UK promotional companies. Uh, those two fights are great. Uh, I would love to see Shiraz versus either Smith or, or Eubank. But obviously, if Smith's brother is fighting on the card, you throw the other Smith on that card, doubleheader Smith card uh, in Saudi Arabia against Anthony Yard and, and Shiraz. Uh, I think that would be dynamite. But let me know. Obviously, I'm not from the UK. You guys know more than I do uh, on, obviously, UK boxing. So let me know in the comment section below. What do you think? Uh, what about those two matchups? And what are three other potential fights that we could see on that Saudi Arabian card? matching matchroom versus frank warren's promotional company whatever it's called uh, but let me know thanks for watching peace out enjoy your weekend